Are you tired of missing out on the husband of your dreams because he thinks that your wig is matted and going into a matted ponytail and well, it is, I can totally help you because in this video we're gonna be discussing how you can take your old, curly, matted, ugly, stanky wig, this one is really stanky, and you can make it into something smoother and nicer. Now I put out an All Points Bulletin asking people if they could donate out a curly wig and this one is kinda curly so I'm gonna be showing you guys on this hair piece which here looks okay until you come to the underside and you start seeing areas like this here where it has kind of had it all across this back section of the hair. This one does need a bit of love primarily because not only is she matted, she's also stank. This unit smells like Satan's dirty drawers mixed with hot sulfur. This unit smells like spoiled beans mixed with sin. It's been through a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and toss it onto a wig head like this here and then we'll dive right into the rest. Mind you, this is a half wig. So rules are gonna be slightly different here, but still gonna show you the same technique. And in this video, I'm also gonna show you how you can make these curls even tighter than they presently are. Stay tuned. So I've got this wig on this mannequin head right here. And you can see, like I said, she's been through some stuff. Up, honestly, up top, it doesn't look too bad. She's still stank though. She's really stanky. She smells like somebody bad kids who need a diaper change. We're gonna go ahead and pull this hair up. And you guys can see it's all moving as one piece. That's because there's more matting than meets the eye. It's like transformers, but for your weave, and this ain't saving the day at all. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this baby down just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lightly finger step right in here. Just so you guys know, I do have this wig secured in place with the T-pins, like these babies here. Okay, so they help to hold the wig secure, so that way we can kind of detangle and brush through this wig a bit more without having so many issues, things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this baby up. She's clipped in place, and what we're gonna do is just take this hair here, I mean, it's up a touch higher for the sake of the camera because I'm vertically challenged. We're gonna go ahead and bring this baby right on up here and I've got a wig brush here. Now, the thing that I like about the wig brushes is they have pretty sturdy bristles and the nice sturdy rubber backing, so that's nice. It allows you to get through there without tearing out bristles from like your paddle brushes and things like that, so something to consider. So we're gonna start from the end and then just gradually work your way up. And if you do it correctly, it doesn't take long to detangle. You just wanna make sure you're not going all the way up and trying to pull down because that's what happens. So start from the end, work your way up, and you'll go through it much quicker than you would if you're just trying to take it in big segments. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue this process right in through this bottom section. It's gonna look a hot mess when we finish still, but I'll kinda of show you where we're going from there. Jesus. Why even look like this? All right, you guys, so I combed out this brushed out. I brushed out this bottom section here, and I wanted you guys to be able to see kind of what it looks like here. Now, it's not gonna look any better. This is gonna get worse before it gets better. So she's gonna be looking about like how my hair looks today. But don't shave me. This is all natural, and it's matted, but it's not going into a ponytail. We're gonna go ahead and just continue this process of brushing through here. You guys can see it's still kind of catching some on the end, but significantly better underneath already. So we're already working with, I don't know what we're working with, something that works well. I'm gonna go ahead and continue this up the back of the head, which honestly, majority of the matting is on the bottom. So hopefully, this should be a pretty expeditious process going throughout the rest of the head. It may not, because she is catching that note right. There's like this one tinkle. Okay, so here we go. All right, you guys, so we're done brushing her out. So now we gotta go ahead and take it and cleanse it so we can stop smelling so stank and raggedy like it does now. So my apologies in advance for all those who have PTSD for having your wig snap. Let's go. And we're back. So we have our water here in the basin of the sink already. And this water is going to be warm, not too hot, not too cold. You want it warm like when your kids pee in the pool right next to you. I'm gonna be using this shampoo here because I hate it. This is a synthetic wig and this shampoo makes my hair feel like trash. So since this isn't a human hair wig, I'm not going to subject it to the exact same trash it's made my hair feel like. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and you know, use it to cleanse this synthetic wig because it's not going to tear up the fibers. So we're gonna pop it open because I don't believe in wasting money, which is exactly why we're fixing up old busted wigs. I mean, if you got that kind of money in your life, your wig. If you between blessings like everybody else on this channel, or, hey, maybe you're not in between blessings, you just want to spend your money on something else. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we gonna go ahead and make this money last. So I'm gonna give it a good swish around, and then from there, 
we're gonna go ahead and dunk this baby up in there. So what I'm gonna do is let her sit in there. I'm gonna push all of that hair right in there. Now I wanna make sure I get it really well saturated. And I'll tell you guys now, there's always someone to argue with me on this in the comments, so have at it. You cannot condition a synthetic wig. You can try. I have done the fabric softener. It does not work. But because this wig is so stank and smells like wet dog mixed with a toe fungus, we are going to be using fabric softener to mask the smell of this wig. Because I don't know what the deal is. For those who have been in the military, this wig literally smells like vehicle gas chamber. Literally. We're gonna go ahead, push that baby right on in there and get it completely, thoroughly saturated with that water. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up. Uh, and yeah, you guys can see, like look, look at this water. It doesn't even show well on camera. I wish you guys could see how nasty this water looks already. Like this wig has been through the ringer and it's obvious a lot of times when you are trying to deal with fixing up these old wigs and stuff, the first thing you wanna do is cleanse them. That's why you always see me do it first. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, this isn't my only wig fix tutorial, so feel free to check all those out. I also do hair tutorials and tips, and I have a whole series that I recently did to teach you how not to be bald, because I'm tired of seeing people be bald behind simple stuff, you know what I'm saying? So we're just basically gonna act like we are uh, washing our drawers at the river because it smells like someone's drawers at the river. And we're just gonna go ahead and get this. I need to have one of those stones to beat it up against, but nonetheless. So, you guys can kind of see now how that water is looking just from getting that hair in there. Nothing special, just a shampoo that's really janky on my hair. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit a couple minutes. We'll drain the sink, refill it, and then we're gonna put some fabric softener in there. Again, not to condition the wig because that don't work, but we're going to do it to mask the smell. Now, disclaimer, fabric softener does help to condition like super cheap like wish wigs and stuff, the ones that feel like Barbie hair in the first place, but the ones that actually are higher quality synthetic, it's not really gonna do a whole lot, so disclaimer over. All right, so I went ahead, drained the sink, and refilled it with water. So this water is now clean, as you can see here. Now, I still have the unit in here, and this is the part where we need to thank our sponsor for today's video. Gain, when you have stanky kids and stanky weave, fix it up with Gain Fabric Softener. We're just gonna dunk a bit of this right in there, and it's gonna take care of the sour smell that is your mother in law if you like your mother-in-law, I'm sorry. Just so you know, no, Gain didn't sponsor this. Child, please, Parker and Gamble is not even looking at our channel, but Parker and Gamble, you're welcome. Feel free to send a check. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour some in here. It doesn't even matter if you measure it. Don't ask me why I'm doing this. Look, this is, this is how broke I am. Like, that's literally all that's left in the bottle uh, right now, but we gonna receive it in the name of Jesus, and we just gonna act like that's some holy water that's gonna bless the whole thing. So from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a good swirl. And literally, this is just to kind of help out with the smell. Uh, I don't think I can express to you guys how sour the smell is. I mean, I've been talking about it the whole video, so you should have it by now, but still. We're gonna go ahead, let that sit in there a couple minutes, and I'll give it a rinse with cool water, and I'll meet you guys back in the filming room. So you remember when you watched that wig tutorial, and they showed you some way to fix these wigs that cost infinity bazillion dollars, and you're like, I can't afford it. Well, this isn't that tutorial. On this one, I'm going to be using these bamboo skewers that I found at my local Walmart for literally like 97 cents. There's a hundred of them in here. Oh, a hundred of them in here. And we are going to be using these to create our curls today. So, in case you're wondering, stay tuned, and I will show you exactly how to do it. So, what we're gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and take this hair in sections. Now, you can see it's already kind of, you know, back in some shape and all. It's still a little frizzy on the ends. So, I'm gonna take pretty good size sections here. They don't have to be tiny. And I don't wanna do a ton of detangling, but I do wanna make sure the ends are fairly smooth. So, we're just gonna brush those ends out a bit. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and take this skewer. We're gonna place it about midway through on this bamboo skewer here. And we're just going to wrap it around like you would a curling wand, just like so. And I'm gonna literally take that, wrap it all the way to the end section of this hair. So you guys can see, I'm not doing it like a Shirley Temple curl, I'm literally doing it like a curling wand. All right, now what I'm gonna do from there is I'm gonna go ahead 
And we wanna take a rubber band like this baby right here. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that right on up. I'm just gonna lightly put that on there and let's break off this excess because we don't need that part, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and break that portion off from there, let's see if we can get her wrapped all the way around here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this rubber band around here really well, just like so. And then around the top, we're gonna kinda do the same thing, but I wanna make sure it's wound all the way down to that scalp area, like so. I'm gonna grab another rubber band, and we're gonna go ahead and slide it up this hair, just like that. We'll come up to the top and eh, we're going to go ahead, take it, spin it, place it back around the bamboo stick. Now the reason why we want to spin it is because now I can take that rubber band and I can literally just wrap it around the stick for added security. And that way it helps to hold it in place both here and here. And so we're gonna continue this process all the way throughout and I'll of course show you closer so you guys can kind of see clearly what's going on. Okay, so again, I've got a skewer. These I feel like are a bit long, so I'm gonna take them and break them in half. It just became enough for two. From there, we're gonna go ahead and take another section of hair. Starting at that top section, we're gonna go ahead and begin wrapping it around the skewer. Just like so. Now the nice thing about this is you can do it pretty quickly as you can see. Uh, the other nice thing about it is all of your curls are a pretty consistent size and the supplies to do it were rather inexpensive. So you don't have to worry about spending a ton of money on something where you really can't find rods and things this size that are easy to work with. So these make it a bit easier and it's, you know, of course really cheap. So yeah. Pop that around the ends like so. And then we're gonna take a second one, slide it all the way up. And once we get around here to the top, we're just gonna take it and spin it. Oh. And then just begin to wrap it around that top portion as well. So you guys can kind of see there. Now here, I feel like it's not quite where I need it to be. So we're just gonna twist it and push that baby up so those curls are nice and close like that. And that's literally all. We're gonna go through the whole head and do that. And it looks like it would take a long time, but honestly, I'm taking about a one inch section back here, so it really won't take that long. It's taking longer now just because I'm explaining it to you. But um, yeah, this is really honestly pretty easy. You just wanna make sure your uh, subsection sizes are consistent because keep in mind if you're grabbing really big pieces versus really small pieces, your curls are gonna vary quite a bit in size, which honestly isn't a bad thing because let's be real, natural hair doesn't curl all the same, so it's not a huge ordeal. Now, since we broke that last stick in half, I'm gonna take that stick that we broke in half and we're gonna do the same thing with it. Sacre Pio, I have decided to do this portion in a really confusing accent that no longer even sounds French because I don't know how to speak that language or really any other language unless you can't pick that in. Mostly I'm deciding to do this because I've already told you how to do this like multiple times. I've showed you up close and everything, but I don't want you to just watch in awe with no sound whatsoever. So, you know, just keep watching. By the way, if the ends get all tangly, uh, brush them out like this, you know, you're welcome. And then you can just keep on winding it right on around there. And that's exactly how you do it. It's just like that right there. So you want to make sure you've got that wrapped, that little nib right there, wrapped nice and tightly on the bottom. Um, once you've got it on there, you're going to take your little elastic on the bottom like that. Wrap it around and then you're going to slide another elastic right up to the top. Uh, so just make sure you have it wound tightly and slide your next elastic right up to the top. <laughs> These accents are literally all over the place. From there you're just going to literally just wrap it around there, not a big deal. Uh, and once you have it secure, you can stop rapping because, I mean, you don't need to go on forever like Busta Rhymes or like this voiceover. You can be done by now. And then you can save lots of money by switching your car insurance to Geico, but not really though because I switched over to him when I was younger and it was like $200 more expensive. It was the dumbest decision of my life. Okay, anyway, bye.
All right, y'all, so this is what happens when you film on your lunch break. So yeah, I got about this far here and I'll come back to finish it tonight. But you guys can see, look how closely wound these are, how neat they are, all that. Keep in mind, the more inconsistent these are, the more inconsistent your curls are gonna be and the more messy your wig's gonna be overall. So remember all that because if your wig is busted and ugly, don't be trying to blame me. Anyway, I'll come back tonight and finish this front portion and then we'll continue with the rest of the vid. All right, Glam Fam, so I've got this baby wrapped up. It's now evening time, so if the lighting looks different, that's why. But I've got it wrapped up and you guys can kind of see here. I will say it did take a bit longer around the front because I made sure to take smaller pieces. I wanted to ensure I wasn't gonna have any gaps there. I can stand to have some gaps in the back. Can't stand to have some gaps in the front because then it's just gonna look bad. So. Uh, I've got that taken care of. Those are all done. Now, I have this bag here that I showed you guys in the last wig fix video, but just in case you didn't see that one, it is a thermal insulated bag. You can find them usually in the freezer section of like your local grocery store or something like that. So this one came from H-E-B, but if you don't have an H-E-B because you're not in Texas, then you know, you can go ahead and do Walmart or something like that. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that right over the mannequin head. Which, by the way, I'll try to put links in the drop down uh, for the mannequin head, the wig heads, all that type of stuff. Because, uh, honestly, the wig head is just, it makes this process a lot easier. So does the, uh, the mannequin head stand, like you're seeing here. Now, from there, I have a cheap steamer that I have. And um, you can't see it, but it is blowing out steam. And we're just going to take that baby and toss it right on underneath here. So... Uh, the whole goal here is to infuse heat into the bag, which is going to heat up this hair, and then from there, the bag is going to help to hold it in. So I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes after we've done that, and then from there, I'm going to let this bag off, and I would typically let it cool for about an hour, and it would be fine. However, comma, space, insert petty here. I'm sleepy. It's been a long day. I literally just got out of choir rehearsal. It's It's been a very long day. So I am going to let this sit overnight and I've got to go to work first thing in the morning, and then I'll get up. Uh, well, I won't get up, I've got to go to work. Uh, so I'll go to work, and then I'll come back home and I'll show you guys the takedown of this and all of that. I can feel that heat kind of emanating outside of the bag too. So you just want to kind of keep in mind that uh, that steam is hot. Don't burn yourself and die. You don't want to feel like you're living an eternal life in hell. It's just not worth it. I'll see you 20 hours later when this is done. And I'm back. I just got out of work and I wanted to show you guys. This is the following day, of course. But of course, like I said earlier, it'll be about an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and snip a couple of these and kind of show you. Now you can just unravel the rubber bands if you like, but I just feel like that's a whole lot of work. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull a little bit of this hair at the top. And actually, let me see if I can get this closer to you so you can kind of see what's going on. All right, so you guys can see here, this is literally how that curl turned out. We're going to go ahead and snatch right up here. I'm just going to take my finger up there pop that rubber band and we're gonna unwind. From there, I'm literally just gonna glide the ends off of those sticks. Give it a good spin. And then from there, pull that baby on out. And there you have it. So I'm gonna take the rest of these down now that you're entirely too close to my face. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you what the end result looks like. All right, Glam Fam, so once you take out all of the sticks, it's gonna look like your worst nightmare. So I'm now gonna tell you how you can fix that problem. Close your eyes. And then you can't see that it's ugly. But if that step doesn't work for you, then you can always just follow this next step. Okay, so what you're gonna do is grab one of these curls. Let me grab one you guys can see. And you guys can see how like, as you stretch it, you can kind of see where those tracks are in between. You're gonna go ahead and grab it, place your finger in there, just like so. Leave that curl stretched, and just begin to separate out that hair where those wefts are in the wig. And that way when you drop it, it gives you a much more natural look and feel. You get a nice coily texture. It gives a bit of, well, it helps if you show it. it, gives a bit of roughness on those ends and things where you still have the definition, but it just looks a lot more natural. So you don't have this artificial looking shine to the hair. So uh, let me see if I can find another one that's in shot, like this one here. You're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna separate out where those tracks are. So I'm literally just stretching the hair out 
and we're just gonna separate out where each of those tracks are. From there, we just wanna go ahead and see how the ends are together. We're just gonna separate those out some. So just pull them a bit, and you just wanna work your way through there. Don't just, don't snatch through it. Just lightly pull, like so. And then from there, you can literally separate out those layers, like that. So this way, it gives you a bit more of a natural fall and look and you guys can kind of see how that begins to fill out in the wig. So you're literally just going to repeat this process throughout the head. So basically we're just doing that same thing all the way throughout the back of this wig. We want to go ahead, fill out, fill out, fill out. And that's going to give you this natural looking curl. It's really going to look nice when you're finished. So. Let's just go ahead, I'm gonna speed up some, just so you guys can see that this doesn't take as long as you think on this part. I know a lot of times you see stuff and it's just like, that takes 17 ever. It doesn't if you do it the right way. If you're doing it super slow, it's gonna take a really long amount of time. And just keep in mind when you're doing tutorials, typically you slow down the steps so that way everyone can plainly see what's going on. I'm gonna keep up that process and then once I get up to the top, I'll go ahead and show you guys what it's looking at. Oh, hold on. You know what? I've got a small knot here. So instead of me snatching through that knot, what I'm going to do is literally just take my scissors, cut that knot off, and that way I don't cause the hair to frizz out. I want it to be full, but I still want it to have some definition to it, if that makes sense. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> And yeah, I can't wait to show you guys what this wig looks like when we're done. All right, Glam Fam, so now you guys can kind of see, let me show you this texture up close. You guys can see how natural it looks. This, of course, don't forget, this is a half wig, but that way you guys can see, look how natural it looks. You still have that curl definition, but it just gives a much more natural look to it. It's not looking like uh, it doesn't belong on your head. It's not looking super dry. It's not looking frizzy or damaged like it was before. It's not moving all as one piece. It still has a good degree of movement in it. Like this looks so much more natural now than it did before. And you still have a good degree of sheen, not shine. So to me, I just feel like it looks a lot more appropriate. Of course, if you wanted to, you could take this and do it in two strand twists. You could fill it out more. If you wanted to have a fro look, you could pick it out. You could do quite a bit. But I really like the way that this turned out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment box down below. And of course, until next time, you guys, take care, God bless, stay glam. Now you can look good and smell good. It smells much better. So yeah, again, let me know what you guys think down below. Bye, you guys.